From the land of the saguaro cactus comes the roar of a full-bodied stock car. It's Arkham Menard Series racing next from the Valley of the Sun. The green flag is out, and we are racing. Still grinding on each other. This is going to happen all afternoon. Oh, look at no contact. Here he comes inside. Look at that push side by side. Oh, trouble. Oh, it is getting good. And we are racing in the Art Menard Series. There may not be a more picturesque place to be in early March than in Phoenix, Arizona. And then you add in the Arkham Menard Series General Tire 150 at Phoenix Raceway, and you have quite possibly found paradise. The furthest the Arca Series has traveled west in more than 50 years. It is warm right now, but that desert heat will soon give way to an incredible night of racing here in the Sonoran Desert. Inside of the booth, along with Phil Parsons and the three-time and defending NASCAR Ganders RV and Outdoor Series truck champion Matt Crafton, in for the full 150 tonight, I'm Dave Reef. Welcome. Let's first, Phil, talk about a talented group of youngsters tonight, not only focused on winning the second Arkham and Art Series race of the year, but there's also this inaugural Shoe Chief Showdown. What are we talking about? Well, the Arkham and Art Series is 20 races, just like it's been since 1953. But out of those 20 races, they're going to carve out 10 short tracks and some road courses, races that those teenagers can run. They can't run the super speedways if they're not 18 years old, so this gives them an opportunity to race for a championship within the Arkham and Art Series. When you talk about teenagers, we've got a boatload of them here at the racetrack tonight. And that brings us to now to who to keep our eyes on. One of those teenagers, Matt Crafton, is a Sioux Chief Showdown candidate for sure. Who is he? I'd say Sam Mayer. I mean, he's won everything he's been in this year. So I'm going to go with that one right off. That's pretty obvious for sure. Who else should we keep our eye on, Phil? I really like Chandler Smith. He's had five wins last year. He's won 35% of all his starts in the Arca Series. And he finished third here last year in the truck race. I also want to keep my eye on Michael Self. He has the most experience here at this racetrack of anybody in the field. He made eight starts in the OK and N series, and he won here back in 2012. But Matt, he's not the only one with experience at Phoenix. Yeah, you can't go against Ty Gibbs. I mean, last year in the fall race, he came back from the back and won the race. Now he's coming to start on the pole, and a tough one will be. These four drivers join the other 20, 24 strong tonight, all doing the job they love to do. But we also asked those drivers, if you couldn't drive a race car, what occupation would you like to have? It's our general tire driver profile. Enjoy. Extreme meteorologists, fascinated by weather, and uh, there's there's a couple people that I see out there on Twitter that I follow that are storm chasers, uh, especially hurricanes and tornadoes. I uh, would love to do that. I actually played like competitive volleyball for a long time, not to like toot my own horn, but I was actually pretty good <laughs> at volleyball, so uh, I probably would have been doing that, something of that sort. Uh, maybe a crew chief would be a cool job. A lot of drivers that don't make it or just don't have the funds to move up anymore, they end up being crew chiefs, and I feel like I'd be pretty good at doing something like that. You know, want to go into construction, that's what I'm going to school for now, so that's something to fall back on in, in case the racing world don't work out, you know. If I could join the circus, I could be uh, like, a, like a monkey trainer, something like that. I think I'd be pretty good at that. I could communicate well with them. It is perfect for going quick and going fast. Very flat and also very... Nothing like a little green day to get you fired up just moments before the cars fire up for the General Tire 150. You know, there are no problems getting the 25 team going as Michael Self picked up his second Daytona win to kick off this year. He led today's bounty rookie spotlight driver across the stripe in Daytona. As earlier today, R.K.D. Osborne caught up with the new stock car hot shoe, Haley Deegan. 
taking it back a few weeks. Haley Deegan got second in Daytona, and you, your team, and your family celebrated like that was a victory. Why was it so critical to start the season out that way? I think it was just cool because it was Daytona. I mean, that track has so much history, so, so many legendary racers that have raced there. And so it was just something that was a bucket list type deal, and just racing there, having a good run there. To start off season on a high note, a nice momentum. I feel like if we would have won there, it would have been too high of standards for the season. Everything else would have been downhill. <laughs> but uh, I was happy with second. It was definitely a strong run and a strong way to start the year with the team. You're talking about that momentum coming here to Phoenix. You told me earlier today that any 15 cars could win it today. What are your expectations? Yeah, talking to other drivers, there's a solid group of drivers here, really good uh, guys coming up in the series. But I think today it's just trying to be there at the end because last year I feel like our car was a little off, but uh, we were there at the end. And with all those restarts, we were able to get to that front pack. So I think just being there at the end and then uh, kind of dealing with the situation we're in, uh, depending on where we're at. So we're starting from ninth, so we'll go from there. <laughs> as you heard, she is starting from ninth in the field of 24 today. Dave? Thanks, Katie. And as the best finishing Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver, she leads the standings, obviously, as Drew Dollar is also here. Tanner Gray, those are the three racers that could shake things up today, Phil. Yeah, all three had solid runs in Daytona. Haley Deegan and Drew Dollar both with top five finishes. Tanner Gray ran well but had some trouble. You don't happen to know anybody that happened to be a Bounty Rookie Spotlight winner back maybe, in the day? Maybe a long time ago? Yeah, maybe a I wonder who that could maybe, be. Maybe maybe about 1965. Maybe a little BP? Yeah. Benny BP, Parsons yeah. among the many talented drivers that have won this. Riley Herbst is normally racing that car. Well, this is a Midwestern-based series, and this was everything for us growing up in Detroit. And my brother Benny was fortunate enough to run the series in 1965 and won Rookie of the Year and then won the championship back-to-back -back three years later. Of course, when I said Riley Herbst racing that car, that's the 18 car that Gibbs is in today. Yeah, it's always been a very good car and very fast every time they come to these racetracks, for sure. But look at that list, some pretty impressive names. But this is the guy they are chasing as we get closer and closer to the start. Hey, how about the fact that we have 14 teenagers that make up the 24 starters today? How about 820-somethings? How about nobody in age 30? One guy, age 42, one guy, age 76. The average age of this field comes in just a little more than 20. And that's with a 76-year-old. Think about that a little bit as we send it down trackside for the command of fire engines. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome our Grand Marshal, service manager of Pep Boys, Sean Allers. Drivers, start your engines. Four drivers getting their engines fired up, and in just a moment, they'll start rolling down the racetrack. Let's talk now about our General Tire Poll Award winner. We already tipped our hand a little bit. It happens to be... Who is it? It's Ty Gibbs. Ty, Ty Gibbs. Gibbs. He was yep. the fastest car in practice, and... Uh, a little bit loose right there off the corner, but he did a nice job here. Two, uh, two tenths of a second clear of the field. 17 years of age, it's his third pole. Also picked up a pole last year at Salem, and as well as IRP went on to win from the pole at Salem in a race. We'll probably have a highlight for you later, but Matt Crafton, age 43, you've been doing this a long, long time. Do you remember what you were even doing at 17? Yeah, I, I was racing, not stock cars. I was racing the Opel Wheel, Micro, Midgets, and Mini Sprint stuff like that. Not here at Phoenix, for sure. <laughs> well, there are some pretty powerful next-generation kids you're going to learn a lot about today if you don't already know about them. It's time now for our general tire starting lineup as cars, again, waiting to get the going behind the pace car. And How about that front row today? You've got Michael Self, you got Ty Gibbs. Those are the only two guys that have seen a checker flag crossing the finish line here at Phoenix. Yeah, we've talked about these guys on the very top of the show, how strong they're going to be, how strong they are. Same thing back with row number two with Chandler Smith and Sam Mayer. Those guys are going to be awfully strong as well. Row number three, Thad Moffitt actually cut off his red locks. That's the new look for the 46 driver. It's now part of that DGR team. He'll run alongside of Drew Dollar, who had a third-place finish in Daytona. There's Jesse Love. He is the highest qualified man making his inaugural ARCA Series debut. He also happens to be 15, if that's not young enough. <laughs> wow. Everybody yeah, else. Yeah, that makes me really feel old. And then you got Tanner Gray in the Ford Performance. 
forward there. I mean, he's going to be very good. He ran really good in the truck race last week in uh, Las Vegas, so look forward to seeing him. How about Zane Smith? Had a sixth place finish in that truck race at Las Vegas just a couple weeks ago back in row number five. In row number six, you've got Brad Holmes, who actually led laps, eight of them, back in Daytona. Still looking for that first win. Could it possibly come here in the desert, running along with Nick Sanchez, one of the many drivers in diversity for NASCAR? There's Chase Cabra. He won two races in the in the uh, East Series last year, so he will be back to defend that championship as well. Christian McGee will race the 22 from inside of row number eight, along with Howie DiSavino in the 32. Then there is Gio Selzy. That's a name you're going to want to pay attention to. Yeah, he's from out where I'm from, Fresno, Cal California. So I'm going to have to root for this kid. Son of a NHRA champion, legendary Gary Wild Thing, Selzy. We have an NHRA son of an NHRA champion and an NHRA champion in this field. You know, the NHRA guys, they decided they, they wanted to start making They wanted to turn left. Yeah, <laughs> just not just at the end of the racetrack. How about just rinse and repeat? And they are going to do it. 24 cars strong, and there is the 76-year-old Tom Birdie that will start back at this field. But this is a man that has about as many starts as those 14 teenagers do combined in the Arkham and Art series. It's incredible. Well, the field begins to roll, and as they do, it's our opportunity to talk a little bit about the five onboard cameras that will be covering all of the action today. One of those making his Menards Series debut hails from Tampa, Florida. He's the 4E car. That's Chase Cabra. It's the general tire onboard as he starts 14th. Figures to give us some pretty interesting looks. How about Jesse Love? That's the Toyota 15-year-old Jesse Love. He's going to start from the seventh spot in the Napa Toyota. He finished second at the first West Series race this year at the Bullring. Yeah, then you're going off the Thad Moffitt best career finish at, uh, at Daytona, so that Ford performance forward there. That, of course, short for Thaddeus Moffitt. That's his given name. Sam Mayer will take the Chevrolet on board from the fourth starting position. Mayer, of course, winning the two East and West races so far, looking to go back to back to back. And let's ride along with the most experienced guy in the field, Michael Self, our Daytona winner and former winner here at Phoenix. He's going to start second with a Sinclair Toyota. Michael Self, one of those guys that circled Phoenix when it came on the calendar because of, well, racing here in the past, but this track's changed a lot. Oh, it's changed a lot from what it used to be. I mean, I, I still turn call turns one and two, what they are now, three and four. Me and my crew chief, my spotter, we're all over each other <laughs> each every week. Here we go here. Well, imagine winning Daytona once. Michael Self did that three years ago, but then to win uh, Daytona a second time. It's something he did less than a month ago as we take you back and show you highlights from February. He had to dodge a lot of action there. What a big, big wreck here just as they exit always have the travel. Always seems to at Daytona. There's another view of it. Some hard, hard hits here for a lot of guys. That was Natalie De Decker right there in that 52 car. Haley Deegan was close in that monster car. Came home second, but Kevin Reed, crew chief, was able to get Michael cell phone. Still proud parents for Haley Deegan. Self flexes his muscles, but still hugs to go around back in the pits for Haley from family and friends after a solid finish there. And then there's that 18 car that will start on the pole. And for more on that, let's check in with Katie Osborne. You're right, Dave, but Michael Self here might be confident as he leads into this race because he won here in 2012, but that was before the track was reconfigured. Here, say in the garages, the car to beat is the number 18 of Ty Gibbs. He's raced here under the new configuration, winning the 2019 West Finale, making moves from 22nd to 1st and battling with Sam Mayer to the finish. This guy knows how to get the job done and says his biggest asset is that he feels confident in his restarts. The 18 top practice and is starting on a pole today, Dave. A great way to celebrate there. Ty Gibbs has the coach with him here this weekend down on pit road right now, seeing if he can get his grandson into victory lane once again. That is a cool, cool <laughs> man, an iconic figure. <laughs> Phil, let's talk about the racetrack here. Very unique is Phoenix Raceway. Yeah, it certainly is. It's kidney shaped. The uh, it used to be the back stretch had a dog look. Now it's the it's actually the front stretch as they exit turn number four. This race is one mile. This racetrack is one mile. You see the turns are banked anywhere from 8 to 11 degrees. The front straightaway banked 8 to 9 degrees. And now the back stretch is only 3 degrees. You see the front stretch is 1,500 feet. 
Let's take a look at our race analysis. Our first race for the Arkham Menard Series here at Phoenix Raceway. 150 laps, 150 miles. And we're going to have the first time in the Arkham Menard Series that we have modified pit stops. Yep. That means when the caution flag comes out, the field is frozen. You can stay out and maintain position. And then you will start in front of the guys that make a pit stop for tires and fuel. They can do both on the first pit stop. As long as it's not simultaneous, they want four tires. They have to come in a second time. I mentioned a unique racetrack. The pace car ducks in off of turn number two, down the back stretch, through three and four, the start finish line, located right in the middle of turn four. Guess what? It's time to turn them loose here at Phoenix Raceway. The general tire 150's green. And watch them fan out underneath that double, that yellow line there. No out of bounds here, Matt. Oh yeah, and look at these guys kicking up the dirt, and then you go down and turn one here and go, man, do I got a lot of dirt on my tires? Am I gonna be all right here? Look at Haley Diggins. She's the full two car widths down below. The yellow line. Boy, she's doing some digging down there in that toter machine. Three wide with all the teammates pretty much right there. <laughs> David was pulling his hair out. Only Gilland, uh, David Gilland, Polo Masters team. How about Haley Deegan, who started this race ninth, and as we complete lap number one, she's made some definite improvement already. It's Gibbs, Self, Chandler Smith, the top three across the stripe, all wearing the Toyota badge. You could tell Haley had a little bit of experience at this racetrack. She knew there was grip down there underneath the yellow line. Racing for position there. A little settling out right now. That's the early portions of this race. You gotta make moves while you can. Matt Craft, because yeah. at this field gets wound out a little bit. It's tough to make moves. Oh yeah, especially on the restarts. I mean, right there, you're seeing 17 car going below the apron and trying to get a run on Haley. And th that's where a lot of your passes are gonna be going down the, the front straight away, getting yourself set up for turn one. At 17 was Tanner Gray, not able to make that pass as Deegan continues on. She turned a lot of eyes in Daytona, didn't she? Yeah, without a doubt. She really did a nice job, just phenomenal job down there. Stay out of trouble, was in position to the end to make a move. Unfortunately, wasn't able to get that win, but a great second place run there, which tied the best all time by a female in the Arkham Menard series. Aaron Crocker three times, and you've also got Shauna Roberts, who finished second there at Daytona. One thing a little bit unique is that we have uh, cars with the same numbers here. We have two number 17s. That's why I was confused on that one right there. Yeah, Zane Smith and Tanner Gray, and they're running no to tail right now the two 17s that's not confusing enough we have two number fours well we, we have Haley Deegan and the number four car and also a number four for Chase Cabry but you've also got one number 18 he is racing and he is winning this event so far that's Ryan Huff the 18 year old out of Williamsburg Virginia the land coach Toyota for Andy Hillenburg and I'm not a crew chief but is that good? No, I don't no. think it's good. He obviously made some contact. He made his first start ever at Daytona just a few weeks ago, finished 21st. That was his first Arkham Menard start, trying to make his second start out here. And that's the 17 of Zane Smith. The black car. And the black car. Racing, racing with Tanner Gray. Racing with Tanner Gray in the 17, which is blue and white, as they try to move underneath the four of Haley Deegan. That is a battle for seven. That's the Steve McGowan on number 17. David Mayhew ran that car so many times. I know you know David Mayhew well. Yeah. I texted him today and asked him, why was he not driving that 17 car in his nine-year-old son opening night for his mini sprint tonight? Oh, yeah, you, you got to take care of the kids That's without right. a doubt. And Zane's going to do a very good job yeah, of that. He's, he's doing a very good. Great racer. Tanner Gray also gets by. Tanner going to be joined in the DGR stables by his younger brother, Taylor, as soon as he turns 15 later this month. For all the people that think Tanner's pretty talented, they say watch out for Taylor as well. <laughs> He's got the goods. Yeah, that's why I keep hearing Taylor is really good. He's won a lot of late model races already, and he's going to lead a lot of laps in all these places. I, so. I remember another guy from Las Vegas telling me that, that wait till you see my little brother, and that was Kurt Busch about 20 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, <laughs> he was pretty good. How's that work? Yeah, yeah, pretty well, I'd say. You're on board with Chase Cabry, the Tampa, Florida native, who started 14th currently. Making some nice improvement here in his Arkham Menard Series debut. Up three positions. At first race, what's the plan? Take it easy, take it slow, be racy, but don't outrace yourself. Well, you want to try to be in position towards the end. Try to just keep your nose clean. You know you're going to have some caution flags. But, uh, the ARCA officials, if they need to, they will put a caution flag out around lap 75 so we can have those modified pit stops that we were talking about. Well, there's Ty Gibbs back out in front. We are working lap number nine, still go with 141 miles to go. Where Gibbs has an opportunity, this driver does not. 
Back at Phoenix Raceway for the General Tire 150, currently under caution. After a bad start, it only got worse for the 0-6 driver, Tim Richmond out of Ottawa, Illinois. Forced to the rear for unapproved adjustments made to his car. He has just now parked it in the turn four fence. Not too terribly hard, but not good. Just gets away from him, gets a little bit loose. You see the difference in color of the racetrack as he backs into the outside wall. The darker part of the racetrack is where they've applied the traction compound. Below that, they've not met. You've raced on this traction compound a number of places all over the country. What does that stuff feel like? You have to tippy-toe on it when you first get to it because the older gray asphalt is better at first, but once you get the traction compound burned in, it's really good. But right now when he got into it, it is really, really slippery right now. So I, I know it. I was like, oh, maybe he's going to catch it, but when he hit that black it is really slippery i think it's applied really for more probably for when they talk about the groove widening out where they get some cars up in that stuff really haven't seen many cars up in that traction compound yet yeah i saw the fall cup race they finally started moving up there the truck race and the xfinity race we ran well below it and they finally moved up and started touching it in the, in the cup race but um it i don't think you're gonna see it get there today so it's gonna be along the gray on the bottom <laughs> Now, Tim Richmond finished seventh in points last year, said it was successful in 2019, but that is not going to go in the success category. Tomorrow, the groundbreaking inaugural season of XFL football continues as the New York Guardians face off with the Dallas Renegades at 5 Eastern on Fox and, of course, streaming on the Fox Sports app. So look forward to that. And then, like a little football in spring to kind of keep you motivated for the fall, right? A little, a little bit different, too. I kind of like the format. Some interesting camera shots. They're really doing a lot to try to spice up the game. <laughs> well, pace lights are, or car, excuse me, the lights are still on in the pace car. 18 continues to lead. Katie, what's going on? Everything good with Ty Gibbs and the Monster team? Dave, under green, it's so good, his spotter, Hal Martin, said, but back it down 5%. Now, under caution, he was asked, how's the car? A little snug, and it was advised to cool it down a little, turn all fans on. I was talking to his crew chief, Mark McFarland, today, and I asked him, this race, as it ends, it'll probably be a little bit dark. I said, what does this racetrack do? He said, well, last year, it got a little bit free, got a little bit too loose as the race wore on. There's Mark McFarland right there, former racer himself. He said, so I, we've adjusted for that. That may be why he's a little bit off right now. He thinks he's going to be really good at the end. This is a race started in the sunshine. It's going to finish in the sunset. This is the desert. It was near 90 today. Katie reminds us about that as she's sweating down there on pit road. We're up here in the air conditioning, but it's going to change for the race car driver as well. Oh, it absolutely does. Whenever we first start here, it'll be just sun. We'll start going down in the truck series race. And then when we're finish under the when it gets really dark it's definitely in for yep you saw from that great camera angle downtown phoenix way off in the distance we're even out further west than glendale and the state farm uh, football facility that they have there there's downtown phoenix it's what a great shot yeah it is a far pull back to get to this racetrack some great hiking down there if you ever you ever done camelback mountain i, I have not but i, I want to know I, I want to know what do you think how many five wide on the free start going into turn one? I I'm, I'm taking the over. I say at least five. <laughs> at least. Yeah. I, I'm going with I'm, at least I'm five. I'm with Dave. If, if, if it's over and under is five, I'm going over. Yeah, I'm going I'm to be disappointed if they're not five. Well. <laughs> the question is, what do you do if you're the 18? You're the class of the field so far, but... He, he's going to go down real estate. He's going to make it He's going to make it shorter. He's yes, gonna I think he's going to be the one down there on the inside wall. Well, you're on board with Michael Self. Will he have anything for the 18? Back through three, into four, in the Geico restart zone. Start finish line. Here we go. Let's fan them out, boys. But the the whole field. <laughs> the whole field went under the yellow line. Michael Self staying strong on the outside. Ty might get loose on the bottom. On board, does he have a run? It certainly looks like he does. But Dino, he's side by side with the monster machine now. What a great view from the Sinclair on board of Michael Self. Ty Gibbs drives it hard down in the corner. There's that bottom you were talking about, oh, yeah. Matt. A little then more drift down there. Turn back down there as well, going to the yellow line. You're definitely not Daytona anymore. Are you going to the yellow line? We'd have to black flag the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Everybody's got to come. Michael Self with eight West starts here, including that 2012 win we talked about. Went to the simulator at Toyota. So many of these racers, that's why they're able to do it. A, no, no, at teenage years, they've probably already raced a decade, but then these simulators are so good. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, each and every week before you, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time and I go to the Ford simulator and I just went and pra practice for Atlanta. 
Well, Ty Gibbs looked to have that lead threatened courtesy of that restart, followed Tim Richmond's yellow flag. Michael Self did everything he possibly could, but Dino just didn't have quite enough bite. He probably technically led a little bit of this uh, race, but not at the start-finish line. They see a little bit of an advantage right there. I thought Chandler Smith might drive down there and make it three wide in that 20 car, but, but a nice job by Michael Self giving Ty Gibbs enough room because he got a little bit loose down there on the bottom. And already back out to a seven-tenths of a second lead over Michael Self, and it seems to be growing nearly every increment on the racetrack. Michael Self, the entire field, we talked about it at the start. They say that that's the guy to beat. Yeah, it, I mean, Michael Self had to be watching his right front tire. I always say that each and every week when you drive down there and you're sitting on somebody's door. I always watch your right front tire, and the minute they start turning right, I better give them some room because <laughs> they're going to come right into me. <laughs> Well, getting into some lap traffic already. One of the slower cars taking that low angle there, separating Michael Self and Gibbs. It's the 0-1 machine. That's Armani Williams from Grosse Point, Michigan, my neck of the woods. The first openly diagnosed autistic driver in NASCAR supporting autism awareness and Century Autism. We congratulate him on just getting here today. And Century Autism is the sponsor on board that car to make this happen for him. See the four car of Haley Deegan. That's Tanner Gray, her teammate. In the blue and white number 17 trying to see if he can look underneath. They're not able to do it this time. Remember that black 17 car. Zane Smith was part of that party a while ago. He's raced himself up into the fourth position. Got by the 21 of Sam Mayer to move up into fourth. Bailey Deegan, she talked a little bit in some post-race interviews from Daytona about rattling some feathers back in the day, running in the East Series, me, the West Series, picking up those wins, trying to be a little bit more respectful out here. Definitely felt like coming home second at Daytona to Michael Self uh, was kind of like a mini victory, if you will. Well, I think for sure. You, anytime you can go to Daytona for the first time and have the solid run that she had, ended up through the second place finish. As we see Tanner Gray now trying to take over that seventh spot from her. Katie, you got more on the Ford driver? Check back with her in a little bit. It's Tanner Gray in his 10th ARCA start. Also has some Gander truck racing on the horizon, as do you, Matt Crafton. Great to, to have you hanging out with us for this 150 today. Yeah, I love coming in here. I mean, this Arkham and Art series is great. I mean, it's great what they're doing with the, the East Coast and West Coast. Now let's check in again with Katie. Microphone check in with us, but that must be on the camera having some problems connecting with her. But Tanner Gray, the youngest NHRA champion in history, age 18, also won in pro stock at age 17, become the youngest winner in that category, and just took all of that knowledge and has brought it to the road course. He's really done a nice old, job, a nice job here, I think, for no more experience than he has. He he ran three. Arca Menards West Series races last year, and he finished second three times. Every time he teed it up in the West Series, he finished second. Did a nice job running the East Series. Got a win at South Boston in his first ever year on, on a full year on pavement. So pretty competitive feel in the in the Arkham Menards East Series that he was able to beat and uh, and really did a nice job as you mentioned at uh, Las Vegas. Had a top ten, his first top ten in the in the Gander Truck Series. Oh yeah, did very very well. I mean I raced around him and I mean, you, you just never know what you're going to get. I mean these kids are 18 years old and you're going to a mile and a half and and you got to learn a lot about the air and they did very very well in this race. Well, Ty Gibbs continues to lead. He was the quickest in practice. He was our GT Pole Award winner, and he has got firm control thus far. 27 laps of 150 in the books at Phoenix. Lap 31 at Phoenix Raceway has brought out our second caution at the General Tire 150. What a beautiful day here in Avondale, Arizona, just a little bit west of downtown Phoenix. It was brought out because of the 22 car. Paul Andrews, crew chief, Chad Bryant Racing, Christian McGee making his inaugural start. Again, found a 
a little slippery going over there in the corners. Well, I think he got a little, made a little contact with Gio Selzy in the yeah, 16 car. Yeah, that got him in the outside wall. Not a lot of damage. I was talking to Chad Brown. Let's take another look at it. See, he's just going to drive across the nose. I'm not sure that he... And I'm going to blame I think that he, more on the spotter. Yeah, I think he maybe thought he was clear, and uh, and maybe the spotter didn't tell him that he wasn't, whatever. Not a great deal of contact contact with a... As a race driver, driver, I'm going to blame the spotter all the yeah. time, right? I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Well, let's see what Paul Anders will do to this car. Christian, a well-known super late model driver around California, actually raced at the 100-lap race at the Bull Ring prior to the West race. Finished second to Kyle Busch in that race. So he's talented. There's no arguing that. I was talking to the car owner, Chad Bryant, uh, the other day, and I said, how, how did uh, Christian Meeke come about? He said, well, I was at that race at the Bull Ring, and he did such a fine job. Uh, as you mentioned, finished second. <laughs> As Sam Mayer comes down pit road to Kyle Busch, he said, if you ever want to do any other races, let me know. And that's how that thing happened. That's Sam Mayer that won both the East and the West Arkham Menards Series races so far this year. An unscheduled stop. Remember, the uh, modified pit rules are in effect. Maybe just get on a little bit of a different cycle, so to speak. Yeah, because he can't make it the rest of the way. You see, here's the, the modified pit stops. Everybody that stayed on the racetrack will re retain their position. Anybody that came in that time, they can do two tires and fuel on that pit stop. They will line up behind the cars that stayed out. If they wanted to come in a second time to, for the other tires, they can do that, and they would line up behind the cars, number one, that stayed out, and the cars that only pitted once. And as far as those two tires and fuel, if you elected to do that at the same time, this modified pit procedure, they don't want you doing them at the same time. Change the tires, then add the fuel, or vice versa, but just not at the same time. Yeah, as long as you don't get lapped on pit road, you will you will go back out in the position you're supposed to be in uh, relative to the other cars that did the same thing you did. Can you pick up a spot, beat somebody like off no, pit road? No, you cannot beat anybody cannot off beat pit anybody. road. The field basically is frozen. Okay. But again, everybody that pits will go behind everybody that stays out. All right, I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> Because well, you're going to have those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have those, what, three, three races, I think, in the in the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. Good point. You're on board with Sam Mayer, the Franklin, Wisconsin racer, the Chevrolet Performance on board. He's got a little bit of a rivalry going. We saw him pit just a little bit ago, but a rivalry that started back in Gateway with the 18 in the Gibbs machine. Yeah, those these two guys seem to be close to each other every time they run because they both run so well. See Ty Gibbs now shooting through the middle there. This is the last lap. Gets inside, makes a little contact mm. with Mayer. Ends up winning that race. As we say, we put our smart people on it to try to start documenting some of these things. Of course, the coach on board for that victory lane, exactly like you'd expect it to be. As Gibbs was able to take that win, look at their head-to-head -head numbers since the start of 2019. Pretty competitive. They're yeah, really close. The only difference really is the laps led. Almost 500 more for Ty Gibbs, but you see four wins for Ty Gibbs, three wins for Sam Mayer, and they finished one, two, three times in the 16 times that they've raced against each other. Say that five times fast. One, two, three times. One, two. <laughs> now with more on the 21, let's check in now with Katie. Sam Mayer said that he is not comfortable in that car. They're doing two left side tires. They're doing fuel. In talking with him earlier, though, get this. He says his goal this year is to be more aggressive. Last year, he felt like he was bullied around and lacked confidence. So that is his goal this year. We'll see if his two uh, wins here already this season help him out in that confidence, Dave. Well, he's driving the same car that he won at the bull ring in, but they said through social media channels, this car right now that's that's lacking some speed, and they're certainly trying to find that. And if you don't have that speed, yeah, it becomes a very uncomfortable situation. But there's two different engines, two different distinct engines that are running in this race today. You have the uh, the Yates spec engine that's been around for a number of years, and then the Arca Ilmore that's been around for four or five years. Uh, right now, Sam Mayer is running the, the Yates spec engine, which is the first time that they've run that engine. Ooh. Oh. Michael Self just took a shot in the he back. He didn't go. Look Smith. at him. Yeah, Problems for the 25. Looks like maybe a transmission issue or something like that for Michael Self. You got it going now. I don't, I'm not sure it's in high gear yet, though, is it? Now it's going. But look how much track position he lost. No, something's wrong. Something's check. still wrong. Time problems, yep. yeah. That could spell the end of the day for Michael Self. Gibbs continues to lead. That's the 4E car. That's yeah, Chase, Chase Cabry. Cabry. Must have had some issues for Chase. 
Bad Moffat, the 46 right there, the 11. Of oh, Dawson. the 16 goes around into the wall. Gio Selzy. He just had somebody sitting on his door. I mean, it wasn't it was a good hard race, and the air is just so valuable having it on the right side and having side force, and he just got sucked around right there. Gio, the younger son of the NHRA champion Gary Selzy, the second racer ever in that history to win both top fuel and funny car. Gio's got a bunch of youngest in his resume. Youngest winner at the World of Outlaws, youngest winner in Knoxville. The guy who's making that transition to pavement. In fact, his first ever pavement race in a spec late model, he found victory lane. Yeah, that was Sam Mayer that was on its outside. And you talk about it, that car on the inside, so vulnerable. There's, there's Michael Self not going at the initial start. Zane Smith, the 17, Black 17, made contact with him, but uh, you see. Boy, we sure have had some drama. Gibbs has been dominating, but Self has got problems, and we've had three cars now get turned around here at Phoenix Raceway. Don't go anywhere. Back in Phoenix, Arizona, where NASCAR's early season Western swing continues as the Cup Series is ready for a duel in the desert. Race day kicks things off at 2 Eastern on FS1, then switch over to Fox at 3 o'clock for continued race day coverage, followed by the green flag at 3.30, or catch it all on the Fox Sports app. More and more people living their lives on their phones, getting all their information and all their great video. 25 car, my goodness, Michael Self, the Daytona winner, running second comfortably all day long. Car suddenly develops problems. And he had ran a lot of laps. It was actually faster than leader when I was watching the scoring. Let's take a look at the replay, uh, replay of the restart. We're going to ride along with him. Listen, he's going to go from second to third, and everything seems to be fine. And then it just starts shutting off. You heard him get to third shift, and no problems there. Then the thing starts shutting off. It literally looked like you hit the ignition switch or something, how shut off. Car made its way to pit road. They think they've got the problems figured out. Still stumbled a bit getting off of pit road, but the green flag back out. Ty Gibbs blocking all the real estate yeah, he can. As, as you're all saying, it's an electrical issue. The car just died. It turned off. You turned off all the switches. It came back to life. As he pulled into the pits, though, it turned out that it backfired and shut off twice on pit road. They're going to go with two rights as they did. It just was in the rear. And as he was advised, shake it off. It'll be more fun now, said Kevin Reed. Kevin doing his best to, to pump up his driver, Michael Self, in many of those positions last year, trying to protect a lead that he ultimately gave up. You see him on the right side of your screen trying to battle back and see how far he can come. Gibbs continues to lead. Chandler Smith second. Tanner Gray now up to third as these cars battle. There's Gracie Trotter, the 99 car. She's having a nice run running up in the eighth spot right now. There's Zane Smith running behind the 15 of Drew Dollar. That's a battle for the fourth spot. There's Haley Deegan right now in the sixth spot in that number four car, the black number four. Zane's got a lot of front end damage from running in the back of itself. And you could hardly even tell it on Self's car. Yeah, yeah, he, he definitely back. had a rear bumper on the thing. Yeah. On board with Michael Self, the Sinclair on board looking across as he puts Howie DiSavino back in position. Motivated racer now behind the wheel. How much ground can he make up? That sun's becoming an issue now off of turn two, Matt. I know this can be one of the worst places for that sun hitting you in the face. This is the worst place. I remember even before they put those grandstands there, I mean, you'd go into turn, old turn three, just completely blind. Or now turn, new turn three, completely blind. So it's going to be tough when the sun starts setting right how about here. You, how about you figure out before you go back there in the fall with Junior Joyner on which corner's which here? Uh, I'm, I'm going to struggle. I'm not going to lie. I've been going there for <laughs> a lot of years. Right there. And it's going to get worse and worse before it gets better. Gosh, and I remember coming back here in the late 90s for the Copper World Classic. This place has definitely changed a lot. You're showing your age now, Dave. I uh, got nothing. It's just, <laughs> believe me, it, it shows up every day in the mirror. Trust me. I know there's a lot of times I used to go into that sun in a turn one, and I would look at the inside wall where it would end because I couldn't see the end of the front straightaway to see kind of your reference where you lift. And especially as you get some debris on the windshield and stuff like that, you see a lot of damage. To Zane's front end there, as you mentioned. He's got a defense, too. Yeah, he sure has. You can see the right rear quarter panel showing some damage. Zane Smith running up as high as fourth early. There's that damage you're talking about. Yeah, just got a little bit wide up off the corner. Haley Deegan was was underneath him, but there wasn't really, she wasn't that close to him. No, she wasn't that close. He just got up there when the, the no-go zone, we'll call it. 
Sometimes there's some debris, some marbles up there above where people have been running, and it's like you're on ice. So let's see how Zane Smith is able to battle back from that. He's 37th Arca start. He's pretty much raced it all. But it's pretty tough when you get up in the fence. Meanwhile, the 25 continues to try to make ground. And I think right now he's just riding around hoping for a caution so, so we don't go a lot down. We'll and still probably have that defenders. mandatory. Yeah, I think we'll see one so. at lap 75 so he knows he only has 27 laps to go. All he needs to do right now is just stay on the lead lap prior to that caution flag. You can see how careful he's being right now. He's really doing a nice job keeping, keeping that car underneath him. There's the 12. Right there, that's a, a note, one of the McAnally cars. That's Lawless Allen. He was the Trans Am <laughs> Rookie of the Year last year. Great racing name, yeah. Lawless yeah. Allen. Making the transition over to stock cars. And then you got Self putting on a show coming from the back right now, and he's going through a pretty good pace. There's another shot of Gracie Trotter, the 99 Enios car for Bill McAnally, and there's Thad Moffitt. Battling for 11th. Another DGR Crosley car. Three of the DGR Crosley cars in this race. Haley Deegan and... Tanner Gray, teammates to Thad Moffat. First Thad, the grandson, the seven-time champion. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I did see Thad come down pit road in, on that last stop. Yeah, he pitted on lap number 33. And Gracie has, has not been to pit road yet that he's racing with. On board with him. Recently cut off eight inches of what I'm going to go ahead and call his red hot locks. Oh, oh. Michael Self around. Maybe trying a little bit too hard. Was there contact from that from that 12 car of Lawless Allen? With cameras circling this racetrack, we can go back. We can find out exactly what happened. Looking to the inside of the 11 machine. Yes, he got some help. Got some help, but but it looked like the gap opened up there. Do you think maybe that thing shut off again? Is that a possibility? Or they ran in on the 11 card and he checked up a little bit. Katie's got an update. Right before that, the car was shutting off every straightaway cycling, every lap in a turn three. Kevin Reed, the crew chief, says, let's have another fuel switch ready. So if he's coming in to pit, that is what is going to happen, Dave. Continue drama here. The fourth caution is out Kevin Reed and the Sinclair crew. That is the championship winning team. Basically the only change, a different wrap and a different driver from the car that Christian Eckes drove last year. But this one has got some problems today in Phoenix. We documented it with the onboard issue. Let's listen here. Oh, yeah. I think it just yeah, wouldn't it go. Shut off. Steam. Yeah, yeah, he, he got back off. in the throttle and it wouldn't go. So certainly no fault for, of Lawless Allens there. Credit him for being able to keep it gathered in. And there's that backside damage there for sure. Only hitting him as hard as he did. I mean, that could have been oh, a lot yeah. worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, could have been a lot worse. So as we mentioned, we're under our fourth caution, working lap 54. There's still a long way to go to settle this one today here in Phoenix, but that sun's starting to go down. That's when things are going to change. We're getting closer toward that approximate lap 75 caution. You don't have to come then, though. Remember, I think some of these guys are going to pit now. I wouldn't be surprised if that 18 car... What is the fuel Ty Gibbs, then? I think anywhere, probably around 100 laps, and we have right now, we're inside 100 laps. So at least 90, 90 to 100 laps, and we're inside of 100 laps to go right now. In fact, Gibbs is on Let's pit come. road, as is most everybody else. So again, the modified pit stops in order right here. Nobody will lose a position, but yes, a good opportunity to just go ahead and get your cards in order for this stretch drive. I think more than likely we'll see uh, right side tires and fuel for this 18 car. But Mark McFarland told me that he thought that they would come back in and get left side tires on the next lap, which would obviously cause him to line up behind everybody else that only stopped this one time. So I'm going to I'm curious to see whether he's going to change that strategy as we see Tanner Gray get left side tires on his 17 car. Those tires that also come off have to stay on the hot side of the pit wall. Our officials will come over, make sure everything's cool there. Once those tires are on, only four people those over pit fuel wall. can come in. Yep, for only four people. All the attention, though, being placed on the 25 car. Can they get that car running? Can it continue to run? Will he be a force? Can anybody? Catch this man, your race leader, since the beginning.
back at Phoenix, Arizona for the General Tire 150. Along with Phil Parsons and Dave Reef, how about Matt Crafton, the now three-time NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series champion, getting the job done without winning a race. That is some strong effort you put in right there. Yeah, we finally got together at the end of the year, and, and we just finally had everything go our way throughout a whole race, and really looking forward to Atlanta. Got a weekend off. Gander Trucks next coming your way from Atlanta and all the times you see on your screen. What a great racetrack for the trucks in Atlanta, Matt. My, it's always my favorite racetrack. I'm, I love coming to Phoenix and love going to Homestead winning championships, but Atlanta <laughs> is hands down my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. So some changes here. As we speculated, Mark McFarlane, crew chief for Ty Gibbs, did bring him back down pit road to get his other side tires, along with most of the rest of the field. They only have three cars right now that stayed out uh, that are on the lead lap, and that's Sam Mayer, Brett Holmes, and Christian McGee. So when it's all said and done, the 18 car is now back in position number 11 as we check in with Katie Osborne. Well, guys, this is when that strategy really comes into play. And talking with Sam Mayer earlier, he said he was actually terrible in restarts last year. And he says he's really had to practice timing on when you give the throttle, how much throttle you give to not spin those tires, and going at the right time. Those are his three keys that he's working on here with this restart. You always hear about racing luck. When we talked about Sam Mayer earlier, it looked like he was having none of it today. It wouldn't be a factor, and all of a sudden, Game's changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Right now, the top 10 cars stay down the race. Well, at least either stay down the racetrack or only pitted one time. From 11th on back, those cars pitted that second time. Yeah, I think he's praying right now. We're going to have a lot of cautions, and I'm going to have enough fuel. Fresh off of Daytona came the new Smyrna East Series opener for the Arkham Menard Series. A little battle there with the 18 for a while, but Sam Mayer's able to pick up that win. You know what? Let's head out west. Do it again at the West Series opener. The Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the Bull Ring. Guess what he did there? Running the Spencer Clark tribute car. Spencer tragically lost his life in a automobile accident, a non-racing automobile accident. But uh, Spencer Gallagher, Maury Gallagher's son that they started this team for, was he was a, Spencer Clark was a hero of his, and they wanted to honor him with that paint scheme. Unbelievable little race car he was. Yeah, do you race against him, Matt? No, I just seen what he did. Yeah. He'd won a lot of races. And now on lap 59, the green flag comes out once again, and this time it's Mayer that controls the field. Brett Holmes, that 23 car, what an amazing year. You know, now look at Ty Gibbs down on the apron of the racetrack, driving by cars. All the way up to the, I think, the fourth position, third position. Passing five, six cars just that quick. He restarted 10th or 11th. That, that's the great thing about Phoenix going into turn one is being able to go where you want to go. Go below the yellow line, six cars below it if you need to. Michael Self also staying out. He's back up into the sixth position right now, but with a car that still is a question mark of whether it will go the distance. And suddenly, just that quick, the 18s raced right on past Haley Deegan. Ty Gibbs is back up to second. I think it'll just be a matter of time before he dispatches with the 21 of Sam Mayer. Yeah, I think Talk. Mayer was not wanting to see him in the mayor this quick. Remember listening in on the scanner one time when Ty was running really, really good. One of Mark McFarland's jobs was to keep that young man in check. I wonder how he handled all of this throughout all the scanner traffic. However he's handling, he's doing a good job because he is already making his move to retake the lead here on lap 62. Remember, four fresh tires for that 18 car of Ty Gibbs. It's been 20 lap, over 20 laps since Sam Mayer's been on pit road. And just that quickly, Gibbs is back out in control once again. Still, though, 88 laps to go. Long way to go in this race. The sun's getting a little, getting a little sun, bit better. Yeah. It's getting a little bit better now. Michael Self has moved up to fourth. Position behind Deegan. We know he has a good car. If that thing just doesn't shut off, he's going to be able to race his way back towards the front as he moves underneath the four of Deegan. Yeah, absolutely. I think he came into two tires right there and fixed his problem and had a great restart as well. And he might give Gibbs a battle here at the end of this race. Boy, if you went away for just a little bit and check back in with us now, you said Gibbs and self up front just kind of like it's always been. But it hadn't always been that way. No, sure hasn't. Got a caution flag out once again. The fifth one already. The 99 has issues. That's Gracie Trotter. 
third generation racer out of North Carolina. One of Bill McAnally's four racers. Yes, yeah, she finished fourth at the bull ring in the first Arkham Menards West Sears race. Stops on the racetrack. Read an article about Gracie. At age seven, was a trophy girl when Harrison Burton won Bandoleros. She liked that limelight, but she likes this limelight racing in the Arkham Menards series even better. The fifth caution continues to fly here at the General Tire 150 at Phoenix Raceway. Stop number two for the Arkham Menards series in 2020. Gosh, getting used to saying 2020. <laughs> that takes some getting used to, doesn't it, man? Meanwhile, we check in on Michael Self. The now two-time Daytona winner has had an eventful day. Katie Osborne has caught up with Michael Self's crew chief. Dave, I think it's not just eventful for Michael Self. It's also for Kevin Reed and the rest of the team here. What's the update on that car as it went from last all the way up here to third? Well, we, we had actually picked up some uh, debris on the racetrack, and it was actually shortened the uh, starter out against the firewall. So we, we come in to figure out what's going on, put two general tires on it to kind of get us to the break here and, and see where we're at. But we were able to get the part out that was causing the problem, and we're back back in position now so ties pretty strong there but the Sinclair Toyota is really really strong as well so feel like if we get up we can get out in front of him maybe we can race him. Scale of one to ten how much confidence do you have that Michael can get it done tonight? I've got all the confidence in the world Michael self on these general tires. <laughs> there you go wishing you the best Dave. Provided of course they keep debris off the front of that Sinclair number 25. Well, it has been an interesting day for Michael Self to be documented. We're going side by side here with Ty Gibbs on a restart, looking for the lead, looking like he might get there. He, he got it for a moment, but not at the start finish line. But this is the restart. You can see him right there stall out when that car was shutting off, and he got, got fortunate to catch a caution flag to stay on the lead lap. Shuts off again. Well. Yep, when the car shuts off again, tags the right rear. Michael Self able to hold on to it. That's pretty impressive in its own right, but team's been able to diagnose the problem. He seems to be on a pretty decent pit schedule. And suddenly Michael Self, who's been as high as second, currently runs third and is a factor again. You know, Kevin Reed, as crew chief mentioned, getting to the break. They're going to have a caution, a competition caution to lap 75. I, want, I don't think that Ty Gibbs is going to come back in because he made two pit stops to put all four tires on as well as fuel. I don't think he's coming back in. I'm curious to see whether Kevin Reed will bring Michael Self back in. And I, I have to feel like that Sam Mayer, who last pitted on 33, I feel like he's going to need some fuel at that break. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to have to put some fuel in it. I don't think we're going to get enough caution so he can finish this thing. Well, there have been plenty of them so far. 26 laps worth of caution. But when we come back, hopefully we'll get that Michael Self machine, Dyke Gibbs machine, and the rest of this field back to green as the sun sets in Phoenix. Continues to battle. The 18-year-old out of Temecula, California, driving that Toter Ford, number four car for DGR Crosley. Finished second in Daytona, Katie. She's having another good run here. She absolutely is right now See, sitting in fourth earlier. She said she constantly feels on edge with the whole car sliding in this caution. She says the balance feels funky feels that when she's on top of the track, it's mostly loose. The team told her to improve her entry and security getting into the corner to add a little front brake as well. It was interesting in talking to her since Daytona. She said she's actually been driving her off road truck and she also went to Sebring in a sports car. She actually liked turn 17. If any of you have run on that, most people say they don't like it, but she is one of those people that oftentimes like what other people don't. And it's getting this experience seat time and learning from time to time. Dave. Adrenaline junkie. Why not? If you got access to all of it. I'd do it too for sure. Doing a great job in fourth. Well, we want to go back here as we get set to go green and take a look at what Ty Gibbs did, the 17-year-old, on his last restart. He found a line that was all his own. Watch the 18 machine here leading the race. B very left side of your screen. Yeah. You see him behind the silver and blue number 15. Yeah, he's going to restart about 10th or 11th here. Watch him now. He's going to go the bottom of four wide. He's going to pass those other three cars before he gets to the corner. Then he's going by McGee in the 22, as well as the four of Chase Cabry, as well as the 23 of Brett Holmes, all the way up to the fourth spot, uh, third spot on this restart. What a great job by Ty Gibbs in two that, corners. That was impressive. It was. Did that all in under a half a mile and used the back half of the mile racetrack here at Phoenix Raceway to just go ahead and drive past everybody, retake the lead. That's the front half now. Yeah, I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> it's Phoenix, baby. 
you got to love it. We're hearing from the Arca Menards officials that the competition caution will now come at lap 85 instead of lap 75. So that is approximately 12 laps away. Don't know if that changes much, though, like you're saying. I don't for, think for it really changes much other than if you were going to pit at lap 75, then your then your tires, you know, will have will have 10 laps less on them, but you'll have 10 laps less to make up some some ground too. Brett Holmes and Sam Mears, they're showing back pitting in the in the lap 30-ish area. So those are the cars perhaps of concern as Mayor lines up to the outside of the 18. Lights are off in the pace car and finally now working to complete lap number 74. Hey, we're going to go green again here at Phoenix. Can we talk about these two young men, their battles through their 16 starts together. And here they are restarting oh, this race to think about side that. by side. Juicy, you got to like that for sure. I think we'll they'll probably see a lot of each other over the next 20 years or so. Yeah, I think they're going to be racing each other for quite some time. But in this moment, Ty Gibbs probably shouldn't even waste time thinking about that. His car is just so good. Let's oh, see if he can he's drive. He's laying on him on the start right here. Mayor is. Well, look, get, look how far up from the yellow line Gibbs was. Look who's second suddenly. Michael Self back in a familiar position. I think Michael Self may be the only car that can run with Ty Gibbs in this race. Look at Chandler Smith go way down on the bottom to get by Mayor Carr. Didn't quite get him cleared. Now they're side by side with Haley Deegan and the four right behind him. Sun's still just a little bit of a factor there. Mayor had the right sides up in the traction compound. Looked like he got a pretty good grip there, Matt. Yeah, he did, because I think there's a few of them that have been up there, especially on restarts to get forced up there, and you can activate that stuff once your tires get in and you're running it for a while. As you see, he made it work right over here in one and two as and well. Look at that run he gets up off the corner, too. Nice job by Sam Mayer. So it's Mayer, Smith, it's Deegan, third, fourth, and fifth. That's a battle. Leader out front again. It's Gibbs self trailing now by three tenths of a second. It's like perhaps he's closing in on him. That was a heat self was the fastest car on the racetrack that last lap. And I did notice Mayer went through three and four in the, the traction compound as well and made it stick. Watch him. There he is there you go. Yeah, in the trash compound, and he's making it work. Yeah, side by side. He's the only one doing it right now. If he had a little bit of help, they could really get that stuff going. Look how far away Chandler Smith is as he drives down under the yellow line. It's our Chevrolet on board with Sam Mayer. He's currently running in the third spot. Make that fourth as Chandler Smith is third behind Self and Gibbs. Just past now the halfway point of this 150-mile race. So I caught a glimpse of Tanner Gray, who's running right now in the sixth spot. Go up there to the top side to use that traction compound as well. Yeah, at some point, whenever everybody's running down there at the bottom and, and you get somebody that's ran up there and made some decent time, I'm not going to follow the guy. I'm going to go up here and see if this traction compound, I can get it to activate and I can drive by some of you guys. On board with that, Moffat looking over at Jesse Love as the 32 now brings out our sixth caution of the day. That's Howie DiSavino out of Chesterfield, Virginia. Looks like a good bit of damage to the left rear corner of that car. That's a Kevin Sawinski car. Top of your screen there. Had some contact. He was racing side by side. Looked like the 15 of Drew Dollar. Let's see if we catch it here. Yep. I, they definitely made some contact there. Probably another situation where maybe Drew Dollar on the inside of Salvino. Maybe got a little bit loose, had to use a little bit too much racetrack, and they made contact and around how he went. Yeah, you're going, I mean, really fast down there, probably 150 miles an hour down there, and, and the place is pretty flat, and you get somebody that sits on your door pretty close to you, it takes all that air off the side of these things, and it makes them hard to drive, and that's exactly what happened, I feel, right there. Di Savino, one of the... 14 teenagers in this field. He's 18 out of Chesterfield, Virginia. He's going to make his Gander truck debut at Richmond later this year. That's his home racetrack. So a lot of excitement surrounding him there. There's another driver that's had a little bit of success in NASCAR from Chesterfield, Virginia. You know who that is? I'm going to wait. Maybe, maybe, maybe the guy that won the Daytona 500 this year. Oh. His, for his third Daytona 500 Mr. Hamlin. Win. Mr. Denny Hamlin. Chesterfield, Virginia. 
It is a racy place indeed. A caution. It's been the order of the day so far here, as there are still 70 laps to go to complete the General Tire 150. The setting sun, gorgeous here at Phoenix Raceways. We welcome you back to the Arkham Menard Series and the General Tire 150 for the Richmond Water Heaters mid-race recap. That's where we're at right now. We take you all the way back to the start, show you how it did so for the 18 car and Michael Self. Watch Haley Deegan back in that number four car. She makes a great start, races from ninth to sixth. Gibbs, though, takes the early lead. First caution, Tim Richmond gets turned around over and turn four, makes some slight contact with a safer barrier. And then on the ensuing restart, a little door-to-door -door action with the 25 to Self actually led for a short portion of this lap for the 18 machine, took the lead back. Here comes the next caution, lap 32. Christian McGee gets turned around after contact from the 16 of Gio Selzy, makes contact with the outside safer barrier. And then on the ensuing restart, the 25 just simply won't go. And Michael Self goes from second all the way to the back of this field. A car that's on again, off again. Then in this time, it's the 16 car, Giovanni Selzy. The young Strata California that brings out the caution. Racing with a 21 of Sam Mayer gets a little bit loose and around he goes into the outside safer beer. Gibbs still in control at the restart here. Gotta love the restarts here at Phoenix. But Michael Self continued to have problems. A car that shut off again. Nowhere for Lawless Allen to go. Caution comes out. Leaders come down pit road. Two stops for Ty Gibbs. Sam Mayer gets the lead, but watch Gibbs on the restart from about 10th to 3rd in two corners. That's the black car, the 18, the bottom of that five wide entering the corner. The one about, about 60 feet from the racetrack, Dave. Unbelievable. Great restart, and then two laps later, just overtaking the 21, getting back into that familiar position we've seen him in before. Gracie Trotter has an issue, stalls on the racetrack, brings out another caution. And on the ensuing restart, when Mayer has problems getting that 21 up to speed, suddenly the 25 races right back into second. Wasn't that the guy you said has had all sorts of trouble with the car shutting off and things like that? It seemed like it did for a while, but that problem seems to have gone away. Meanwhile, the problems for the 32 just got much, much worse. That is Howie DiSavino at Chesterfield, Virginia, that has brought us to this point. As we take a look at where we're at, 84 laps of 150 in the books. 18 cars still on the lead lap. We've had three leaders, three lead changes, and we've had 37 laps of caution. That is a bunch. The 18 cars led 76 of those laps so far. That's just how strong Ty's machine has been. Meanwhile, the 21 for more on what's going on there. Let's check in with Katie. Although there still have been a whole lot of caution laps on lap 68, Sam Mayer said the car is really good. He had actually only stopped for one pit stop, and that was for two left side tires and an adjustment. Now, moving ahead for this next caution, he is going to be stopping twice, four tires, and taking some of that first pit stop adjustment out. That is a focus for Sam Mayer and the team. Changing weather conditions, changing the track. Yeah, he's going to have, uh, you know, right now, Ty Gibbs has 25 more laps on his tires, but the problem is there weren't many green fly laps in that. So the tires aren't that uh, that much different than what the fresher tires that the, uh, the fellows that just stopped on this caution got. So what it all boils down to is Gibbs is in the lead now. Deegan lines up. Haley, that is, on the outside of him. Michael Self, 25 machine that did pit on lap 81, starts eighth. That's outside of that fourth row. And a familiar Dino Sinclair 25. And you think the restarts have been crazy so far? They're only getting crazier from yes. here on in. Because that is go time. Take a look at the 77. That's Takuma Koga. First time we've seen him today doing a nice job staying out of trouble up there in the top 10. Takuma coming from Nagano, Japan. First Japanese racer we've had in the Arkham and Art Series since Hideo Fukuyama. Back in 2003, the 18 stranded stuff once again. Tanner Gray, though, with a nice restart. Can he hold on to second, though, with the freight train behind him? Boy, look how wild it gets there mid-pack. Ty Gibbs said, I don't want any part of that. I'm going to just jump out in front. Look at Michael Self on the bottom of three wide, down on the flat of the racetrack. He's digging. He's rooting as the 23 gets him into the four car just a little bit. 
Yeah, he, need to, he needs to make as much ground as he can right now, just because right now it's restarts, and he needs to be able to get back high if he's going to be able to run with I, I think restarts are more important nowadays, Matt, than they've ever been. You've been around the sport a long time, aren't they? Oh, without a doubt, they are everything. I mean, and once you get settled in after the first couple laps, I mean, it's so hard to pass. I mean, everybody's so equal is what it comes down to. General Tire on board. That's the Tampa, Florida native Chase Cabry making his arc of an R Series debut. His self looks to get inside of Deegan and take away position number three. Haley Deegan got a little bit loose up off the corner. Michael Self used that to his advantage and grabs that spot. Gibbs, meanwhile, has opened up a six tenths of a second lead over Tanner Gray. Said Tanner Gray, you saw his right side's up in the traction compound. I'm going to sit down with Tanner next Monday for a feature for race day that'll that'll air sometime in the next few weeks and talk about his transition from straight line racing to oh Sam Mayer in the pits. Must be overheat because of bringing the water lines over to cool it bring down. The, bring the recirculator out. Must must be over as you said, Matt. Must be overheating. Boy, it has been a day. Meanwhile, here his self worked his way back to the rear bumper of the 17. Position two now up for grabs. I'm looking at these lap times right now. The self is running. I think Gibbs is going to have his hands full here. Fine. Bit. Yes, he is. Tanner Gray's doing a really nice job right now, holding on that second spot. And when you sit down with him, you're going to find a very respectful young man, NHRA's youngest champion. Definitely made some mistakes along the way, but definitely learned from all of those. He's like so many of these young teenagers, man, these days. They'll go out, they'll make a mistake. They may even make a pretty boneheaded one, but that guy will own it, and it probably won't ever do it again. What, what the, 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 how little experience he has here. Matt's talked about how how much of a struggle, you know, how hard it is to do to drive these things. And he, he's just got what really just over one year under his belt on the uh, on ovals on the uh, in a stock car. Oh, he's doing a very good job. I mean, they're putting him in everything. I mean, he's running the Arca. He's running the trucks. I mean, he ran a bunch of late model race last year. They're having in something four tires and steering wheel each and every week is turning left at that so he's doing a very good job with it without a doubt trying to get two or three years worth of experience in one year and he, he, he did that last year he raced about as much as he could physically race all over the country oh he absolutely did and like I said it's paying off so far this year he's Zane Smith that 17 car trying to move underneath the 23 of Brett Holmes that's a battle for the eighth spot right there so right in front of them racers using up the bottom side of that racetrack. I love that transition. Sometimes those sparks come flying out from behind it. They're pushing Sam Mayer now behind the wall. 21 drivers done. Let's go down for Katie Osborne on, with more. Well, Sam Mayer was told to shut off the car. The radiator is uh, the radiator hole got up to 260 degrees. It blew. It's just a big mess right now for the for Sam Mayer and his team. Definite disappointment for sure. Especially after such a great way to start 2020. Yeah, he'll have a bunch more opportunities though to get to victory lane to run up front because we know he is. He runs up front every time. Meanwhile, that takes one of the main competitors for this young man away. Ty Gibbs, who has dominated this race, leading 86 laps so far of our 95. Shake things up in that Sioux Chief showdown, too, the inaugural race there, the 10 race that we talked about, series within a series. Factors in all of these young guns that can't make their super speedway debuts just yet. I guess the first time we've seen the 18 on, on our FS1 airwaves. That's right, exactly right. Yeah, he ran primarily short tracks last year that uh, that weren't on our air, but uh, we, we certainly kept our eye on him, and uh, he uh, he really has done a nice job. Two-time winner last year in the Arkham Menard Series. Leading 87 of 95 laps, I'll use the term domination. What word would you use, Matt Craft? Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. domination. I mean, he's putting a whooping on him without a doubt. But like I said, I was sitting here, well, he just took that away from me because Tanner ran faster than him by a couple of tenths the lap before, but here goes Ty and beating by a tenth and a half. Well, Matt, Matt told us at the very top of the show that was one of the drivers he was going to keep an eye on. And uh, well, we've kept an eye on him and he's been out front the whole time. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard not to whenever you're that dominant. You know, the question becomes, is Tanner Gray, Michael Suffer, do they have anything in the tank? How really do they want to show their cards? 
But you could say the same thing about the 18. We heard earlier from Katie, crew chief, talking about, hey, bringing the car back, 5%, save it up. You're killing them right now. No reason to push any harder than you need to be. So maybe he's got a little bit left in the tank as well. As Katie's caught up with Sam Mayer, no doubt disappointing, Katie. An absolutely disappointing night for Sam Mayer, a guy who really felt like he had something there at the beginning, but you now said it's subpar for the rest of the run. How would you describe the evening? Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those nights that we're not the best car, and uh, I was complaining about it all weekend. We don't have the right motor. We don't have right anything here, and, well, it's shown, and we were a fourth-place car, I think, towards the end, and uh, I guess these crazy restarts threw some through the radiator, so, I mean, we'll call our night there. Anything you can take away from the evening? What's that? Anything you can take away from the evening? Yeah, I mean, we just got to be more knowledgeable about what we're bringing to the racetrack, and we just got we got some work to do. I mean, we were the best car here, and uh, we're used to being the best car, so we got some work to do there. But uh, I had a lot of fun tonight. This place is awesome in an ARCA car, and uh, hopefully we can come back in the West Race and kick some butt. Guys, when you know what you have and you know what you're capable of, how disappointing is it really for these drivers? Oh, it's very, very difficult. Uh, I mean, you know that you have the equipment, you have everything to be able to do it. And when you're off, you're off. You're not going to win every week. 16 trips around the around the sun, too. And he's got that <laughs> kind of moxie. Sam Mayer definitely will be back. I know there's quite a few different race car drivers. I mean, Kyle's one of them. I mean, <laughs> when you don't win, I mean, you're mad about it. So, and that, that's a good thing. That's a good trait to have because at the end of the day, if he was happy with just being off, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Great battling going on here. Brett Holmes, Thad Moffitt, Zane Smith. Moffitt ducks below the yellow line. All these cars running up in the top 10 right now. You see Thad holding down that 10th spot. You mentioned earlier, career best for him at Daytona with a top five. Moved over to the DGR Crosley team this year. Very, very strong team that David Gillen and Bola Mastis have put together. Moffitt running in 10th right now. Tanner Gray is still running in second. Deegan running in fourth. That's where those three teammates are all running. Good performance. Pretty solid effort for sure. So for all of the efforts of the DGR team, the McNally team, the Fast Track team, the Venturini team, then you've got the single, the single car yeah. team. It's basically showing everybody how it's done. I don't think it's too bad of a team really to be with. I think no. they're in something like <laughs> the, the cup champion last year. Yeah, yeah. Might be some backing there for sure. Michael Self just hoping to rebound after a disappointing start today. A disappointing finish to the points race last year. Picked off the season well, though, with that second Daytona win. A solid night after all the trouble he had today. Nobody's had any more trouble, I don't think, than Michael Self. He got run into the back of when his Maybe car Mayer, shut that's off. About it, but. And then he then he got run into the back of and spun out when his car shut off. And they got that fixed. And here he is battling up in the top three. Haley Deegan now feeling a little pressure. For the fourth spot right now is Chandler Smith. He's running about a tenth of a second quicker last time around Phoenix. You know, guys, we talk about the job Haley Deegan did at Daytona, and that was outstanding with that runner-up finish. But right now, she's racing ahead of Chandler Smith, Chase Cabry, those guys. She's really doing a nice job here. This is really impressive to me that she can stay ahead of Chandler Smith, a guy that's won 35% of every ARCA race he's ever started. That's not a, not a bad start finish without a doubt um, and I, I did notice that Chandler's moved up and he's moved into the trash and compound and he's making time on her so we're, we're seeing it come in and hopefully it'll keep getting better and better P2 continues to be the 17 Tanner Gray. Tanner Gray Katie take it away well spotter actually told him earlier to change his line hug the wall longer before turning into turn three and obviously he has incrementally made his way up the pack and is running second right now. And asking him, what has he learned so far? He says it's really early still, but one thing I'm trying to get better at is being disciplined and knowing where to put the car. Obviously putting everything a spotter is telling him into play. Yes, he did run the Gander Truck race last fall here, but it's a three-time Gander Truck champion. How similar are the trucks versus the cars? I mean, it is a different tire, and they're going to race a little bit different, but at the end of the day, track time's track time. I mean, if you went here and raced in a late model, then you went and raced in a truck. I mean, just seat time is so valuable, and that's what the Grays have done, and, and DGR, and they put him in good equipment each and every week to put him out, out front. 
Thad Moffitt's Ford on board. You're looking forward to Drew Dollar. Boy, what a Daytona he had. Phil Parsons coming back from that pit road incident, dragging the can, going to the back of the field, coming back up, still finishing third. And was disappointed when we interviewed him yes. after the race. He yes. really wanted more, but an outstanding run. Just, again, very similar to what Haley Deegan did at Daytona. Stayed out of trouble, dodged all the big ones, and, and got a great finish. 19 years of age. And another one been, of those. He's another young man that has not been racing that long. It was just a couple, three years ago he was racing legend cars and then moved up to late models. Ran some super late models and late models as well. Now we'll be full time here for Venturini's in the Arkham Menard series. He's one of the older guys, right? 19? Yeah, he's and one of the older yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got 15 year olds. He, right he can run all the races. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's old enough to run them all. I found it interesting that the third oldest racer in this field happens to be the 29 year old Michael <laughs> Self. Think about that one for a little bit. Gibbs continues to dominate. He has led 101, now 102 laps of the 150 schedule today so far. Ty Gibbs continues to be in control of the General Tire 150 here at Phoenix Raceway. There are now 116 laps completed. A nervous moment, though, just a few moments ago for Tom Birdie, the new Berlin, Wisconsin native. Found himself in a rock and a hard place. Watched the 12 car go up high, clip the six, slide on low, clip the oh, 15. That could have been really bad if you had caught that 15. Looks like Nick Sanchez didn't give him a lot of room. Nick was in that white car that, that Tom made contact with first, and then he come across the racetrack and ran into Drew Dollar. It's amazing that Drew Dollar was able to hold on to that car the way he got hit on that right rear corner. That yeah, officer just wanted to get away. Get if that away was a couple it. foot further, it would have been it would have been bad. But the gentleman that saved it, they went down low. The 12 car that was very impressive for not hitting the inside wall any harder. Exactly. Birdies on pit road. The 15 and the six continue. The green flag stays out. No need yet for caution number seven. Gibbs continues to lead by 3.466 six seconds. Ty, one of eight racers that have raced at the 2018 reconfigured. Phoenix Raceway. You think that's helping? I think without a doubt. And, you know, he ran so well in the Arkham Menards West race here last year and went to victory lane from the back, as Matt was talking about at the top of the show. But we have other guys, too, that have that experience that are running well. Tanner Gray, running second right now, was also on that list of people with experience here. Well, for more on the 18, let's check in now with Katie. Through lap 100, Ty Gibbs was told to back it down 5% twice. Now he's saying the car is tight and they're having radio issues. Crew Chief Mark McFarland said he could tell his driver is getting a little aggravated out there, especially knowing who is behind him. Yeah, but 3.3 seconds or better behind him. He just continues to clip off laps. I wonder if his radio troubles or he just doesn't want to hear them to tell him to back <laughs> off. Could be. Probably what it is when you're that young and you get a good car like that. You just want to show him how good it is. Let me let me keep in my rhythm and run this thing hard like like I know it'll go. So if he's dialed it back, there is still plenty left in the tank there for the 18. Should anybody come to the front to challenge him? There's Grandpa Joe, the NFL Hall of Famer, checking in on his grandson. Gotta likes what he's seeing. Probably though can take off the sunglasses if the sun's down. And NASCAR Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. Double dip in there. There's plenty of cool people in this wonderful sport that we call NASCAR. He's got to be up there in the top four or five. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he just sitting there and he's very proud. Very proud moment right there for the grandfather to watch his grandson go put a whooping on him like this. We talked about uh, the NHRA a little bit ago, too. He also involved in a top fuel and funny car operation for a number of years as that battle for second starting to warm up now between Michael Self and Tanner Gray. Haley Deegan running in fourth right now, a couple seconds behind the Sinclair 25. Definitely got to be cooling off out there as well. Probably adds to a little extra power. Changes the handling capabilities of these machines a little bit. Here we talk about the Bounty rookie contenders, 18 of our 24 starters or bounty rookie of the year contenders led by that 18 right there of Ty Gibbs. We mentioned first time Arkham and Arts debuts. There are 10 of those racers as Moffitt's on the inside of one of those. That's the 15 year old. 
Jesse Love. Jesse Love. Talked about Jesse having that runner-up finish at the bull, wing and bull ring in the Arkham Menards series opener. Really doing a nice job here. Just now falls out of the top 10 as Thad Moffitt grabs that 10th spot. Drew Dollar, that 15 silver car right behind this battle. And he's not giving up there. I mean, Thad drove by him and he's turning back under him. You're not going down swinging right here. Good run off the corner for the 15 of Drew Dollar. See if he can do anything with Jesse Love as they get down in turn number three, uh, one. Jesse even had a run on the 46, but with nowhere to go. They're going to remain side by side. Ooh, sideways right there. Side by side, <laughs> sideways. You know, they call Clear. Jesse Clear. Love the Clear. hammer. Former late model champion, loves eye racing. Clear. And also rock music. How about a 15-year-old who cites 38 Special as one of his favorite <laughs> groups? You wouldn't have thought he would ever heard of 38 Special. <laughs> Not when you're... Barely 15 special <laughs> in terms of age. How about Ty Gibbs up here to try to put these cars a lap down? Wow. That's the 12th place car right wow. there. Drew Dollar. A further example of the butt whooping that is ensuing uh -oh. here. Oh, trouble. Oh, Moffitt up in flames into the wall hard. Left front tire oh, go yes, down. Blue left front for sure. Hard, hard contact for Thad Moffitt. Grandson of the seven time champion Richard Petty. See him moving around in the car. There's no doubt it rang his bell a little bit. Oh, that, that, that knocks the wind out of you. I've done that there in the, the old turn one. And it's absolutely the worst spot for that to happen. Too. Oh, absolutely. You can see some sparks from underneath Operate the car. There. Now it's down on the wheel. He has zero control over that car. He can turn the wheel all he wants, and it's going straight. You're just long for the ride at that point. Jesse Love does a nice job of noticing the sparks oh. and turning left to avoid Thad Moffat. It happens in an instant, but you hear race car drivers talk about it all the time. Got a good onboard. Ouch. Wow. It probably seems like it's a long time before that big hit. About 10, you know 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes of what it feels yeah, like it absolutely. takes. Absolutely. Good to see him climb out, no doubt. Feeling the effects of that a little bit. I mean... They're, they're safer barriers, and, and thank the Lord for them. All the way around. But, but they're not soft, are they, man? No. No, they're not soft, but they, they do they do a lot. They help a lot. I mean, just the seats and the Hans devices and everything that we wear nowadays, is, it makes it a lot better. Moffitt walks away from the 46. He brings out our seventh caution as there are 22 laps to go following this incident. A wall banger here at Phoenix Raceway for Thad Moffitt. Race number two of the Arkham and Ard series. We are at Phoenix Raceway, competing in the General Tire 150 now with 19 laps to go. An event that also happens to be the inaugural race for the Sioux Chief Showdown, which features modified pit stops. Tell me more about it again, Phil. Here they come. Ty Gibbs is going to lead on. I was a little bit surprised that he brought the field down pit road. See, they're going to the right sides. They can put right side tires on. And then they, after they get done with the right side tires, they can put fuel in it. They just can't do it simultaneously, but you can do both on this pit stop. Now, they will restart this race behind the lead lap cars that stayed on the racetrack, one of those being Zane Smith. Now they're going to come back down to put left side wow. tires, so everyone's going to have fresh tires. Again, if anyone decided to pit the first time by and stay out, they would restart ahead of these guys that pitted twice. But nobody will restart ahead of Zane Smith, who stayed on the racetrack and did not come down pit road at all in the 17 car. As far as we know, it is just Gibbs and the 25 car that have come down a second time. So in theory, they're going to line up ninth and 10th. They've been running up front all day. We've already seen the moves that Gibbs has made and the 25 has made. It's going to make things pretty interesting here. The green flag comes out here with about 17 to go. It's going to be fun to watch. I'll it guarantee is. you that. But I tell you, after they go by the start finish line, they have to stay in line until they get to start finish line. How wide are we going to be when we get to uh, the dog leg there? At least six. At least wide. six I mean, wide. Six <laughs> wide for sure. For sure. <laughs> what do you do as a spotter at that point? Uh, you Inside got, of six. Yeah. Inside of six. Yeah. Middle of seven. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, do you say you got three up top, two down bottom? I mean, I don't know. Just say you're on your own. Yeah. You went down there, you're on your own. Absolutely. I don't, what does your spotter tell you when you're five and six wide? 
on your own. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> he, he tries to give me as much information as he can. But at that point, we are on our own. I mean, if, when you're in the middle of that mess, I mean, you got to pay attention to your mirrors and try to pay attention to surroundings. Now, Jesse Love continues to have a strong inaugural race for the 15-year-old. He'll be scored in the 11th position at this point. It's on Napa, longtime sponsor for Bill McAnell. I, Bill, 25 or 30 years, he's had Napa for a sponsor, something, something amazing like that. Bill does such a great job. He has four cars entered in this race. Started with a visit to them just to talk about some product. And the next thing you know, here we got cars, and now we got numbers, we got awards, we got numbers that are getting pretty big as far as East and West Series wins. 99 as an organization, that's some pretty big numbers. Sure is. There's Geo Selzy in the, that's the flagship number 16, the Nap Auto Parts car. So many great drivers have, have driven that car over the years. Brendan Gaughan got his start with Bill Absolutely. McAnally running the West Series and then moved down to the Truck Series and had so much success there. Bill stayed in the in the West Series here and does such a great job. For a guy that's been in it so long, too, take a look at his Phoenix lineup. Lawless Allen at 20, Geo Selzy at 18, Jesse Love at 15, Grace Trotterier at 18. That, that averages out to under 18 for his racing crew. And then there's Haley Deegan with that Toter machine, that Toter Ford. Katie has more. The number four took both rights, but she also said the car is starting to get tight in the center when she gets off throttle. She's been adding that rear brake, and it's helping a lot. Eric Holmes, her spotter, said she is the fast car on track when she hits her marks. Remember, she just wants to be there at the end. That is her mindset here in Phoenix, Dave. You know, Eric mindset, Holmes, yeah. her spotter, has won two or three championships here in the West, and he drove that 16 Napa car we were just talking about. And he won a lot of races. I won a lot of well. races and a lot of championships for Bill McAnally. Good coach for her, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're wondering what Toter is, it is a multi-purpose carts, cans used in waste haulers with the things you leave at your, at your curbside to get rid of your waste. One of the biggest creators of, of those types of things. Look at this lineup with 16 to go. Very, very interesting. Especially with Gibbs back there in seventh place, Michael Self in eighth. Zane Smith, that last pit lap coming 50 laps earlier. How long will the 17W stay in the lead? Will he make turn two? Well, I think his car's a little bit crippled right now because of all that damage that sure. we saw him get uh, when he ran in the back of of Michael Self when Michael's car started shutting off. There's a lot of damage to the front of that car. You can see it right there. He's really done a nice job maintaining a good track position, but it looks like that that with that nose pushed in, he doesn't have the front downforce, I don't think, Matt, that he that he probably needs or relies on. Yeah, it's lifted the, the, the balance up on the car, so it's definitely going to make his a lot tighter. But right now, he's hoping that these guys get to slamming into each other and running each other, and he can get away from them and maybe sneak one away from them. And let's run some more caution laps. Let's Absolutely. just run a few more caution laps. Two drivers, though, including the 18 of Ty Gibbs and the 25 of Michael Self, make two trips during this yellow flag. They've got four fresh tires and certainly more than enough fuel to make things interesting. Probably will come down to a dogfight between those two. Probably. So who you got? Well, tell me why. I like the 18 because he's been the dominant car. That'd gone. be a really hard choice. You should have gone right first, Crafton. Yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, I think I got him because I did say this earlier. I had the guy. Well, I can't jump in there and take him. No, out. Is that you, what you said? I think. Uh, yeah, I, I think you might have had self. Yeah. Yeah, you had self <laughs> yeah. earlier, and yeah. I had Gibbs. All right, I'll here. stick with okay, self. Okay, all right. I'll stick with Seal. Self. Any crazier things have happened? That's for sure. That 18 car we talked about it so much last year, even this year, seems like it figures out a way to be on the podium but it just doesn't get to victory lane as much as probably it deserves to. So many things can happen. There's a long way to go in this race. 14 laps right now. We're going to restart, I think, with 13 to go. Get tied up in, a re in, in one of the restart melees. You get, you know, six wide through the dog led leg, and you got to get down to about at least three wide, no more than three wide when we get down to turn number one. Then you got to turn left then down you there. Turn left. And then yeah. you have all this dirt and debris on your tires from everything when you're down there six wide, you get down in turn one, and it's it's ugly, without a doubt. I mean, you're going, I think they're, they're, I think they're cleaned off now. <laughs> I hope they're cleaned off. Lights were off in the pace car just a moment ago, but they're back on. It well, seems like the three wide battle here. Nobody wants to say, well, you should be there, I should be there. No, it's my spot, you get out of my way. Well, it's up to the ARC officials to say, hey, you, you know, the 17 is supposed to be third or 20, whoever it is, it's up to the ARC officials to you know get these guys in line. Right now? Zane is really loving oh, yeah. right now. More caution laps. Yeah. Just run more yeah. caution laps. <laughs> yeah, now, it certainly now, takes away opportunity at certain laps. Now we've got time. some more three wide racing under the caution flag. Make it four wide now yeah. under the caution flag. Lights are out again. 
Maybe they need to get back on the well, what they need ARCA to, radio frequency. What they need to local do is, FM is, is restart this race, and whoever's not in line, if they told them to be in Trouble. line, yep. oh, now then, we're four then they need the black flag. Now we're four wide. The lead. What is going on here as the yellow lights come back on? Well, Zane, we know that Zane stayed on the racetrack. There's no way that Zane Smith is not leading this race. Would you guys agree? Absolutely agree. Black flag reportedly getting ready to well, come it, out. It needs to be. I mean, it needs to be. So what will ARCA officials do? How long will this chaos ensue? Meanwhile, it shouldn't last another lap. They should be black to flag and who's ever out of the line. They want to go. Yeah, I think some are probably confused. If you took two, you should be in front of the guys that took four. Without a doubt, yes. Yeah, so that's yes. maybe where their, the confusion yeah. is. But, but Zane sh sh should be out front because he stayed on the racetrack. Well, it seems like Tanner Gray does not want to give up his positions. The one that's not arguing that much is Ty back there, and I think I would be arguing a lot if I was him right now. They keep making it three and four wide. How long will this continue? We all agree the Zane Smith is there. Chase Cabry, the 4E being docked to the tail of the field. So Tanner Gray will line up on the outside. That was the contest, if you will. If he doesn't drop back, then they'll pull his, his they will stop scoring him, so. Chase, one of the making his inaugural debut here in the Arkham Menard Series. Lights are off. Pace car is back on pit road. The long trek down the back stretch here at Phoenix before the cars enter turn three. Watch this restart. And head to that cactus between three and four, the start finish line. Self. Michael Self, the Ty's great restart. Back there right now. Gibbs stuck behind the 25. The 25 now up to fourth. The four he's still in the picture, but is he being scored? How about Chandler Smith out in the lead? Has not been all that strong tonight. Solid top five car, but not a leader. Here he is coming with 10 to go. Very accomplished, 21 starts, seven wins. He wins a third of his races, and right now the 20 car is control, but here comes a 25, self on the inside. Tanner Grave racing him for third. The Gibbs 18 now in fourth and looking for more. Gonna pull to the inside of Michael Self. Looks like the 18 will get this spot. Now he's off to chase the 17 of Tanner Gray. Gray down to the inside to block him. Way under the yellow line. Wow. Gibbs into second with nine laps to go. Too much real estate? No. Well, without a doubt, Ty Gibbs will get to Chandler Smith. Tanner, Tanner going to the, the trash compound, but I don't like anything there right now. Now eight laps to go. Gibbs fighting and digging. Good battle for third right here. Michael Self, he's going to get that spot. Remember, four fresh tires on Michael Self's car. Four on the 18 as well. Tanner Gray's not going to give up, though. He's going to try to chase down Michael Self. And the 18 has caught the rear bumper of the 20. Big run coming, under seven to go. Caution out, though, once again. Jesse Love, the 19 with a lot of damage. Both in the front and the back. Some best news for Chandler Smith to wind the laps away. Drew Dollar also involved in that. And I thought he was driving away from that incident. Let's go back and see if we can figure out what, when, where, and why. There it is in the back. They got tied together getting in turn three for somehow, some reason left front fender hooked that right rear quarter in. Yeah, Jesse Love made some pretty significant contact. Like, he got, he got, he got, he got, he got absolutely he did. 
Somehow they got together before they actually got to the corner and it turned Jesse into the outside wall. Two disappointed drivers that were six laps from the finish. Yeah, a lot of damage to both of those cars yeah. out there. Look at the right front, all askew. About 15, 20 degrees of camber. Yep. And it brings out our eighth telling. caution. Yeah, he's saying that the right right front is upper arm is probably broke. Yeah. Tower. Usually hit that hard, usually breaks the brake rotor as well. So how many laps will there be left when we go green? Won't be many. Take a couple laps at least to clean this up. You see some debris on the racetrack right there. Chandler's open for a green white checkered. Mm -hmm. So if you are Chandler, you know the 18 is behind you. How, how do you handle the restart? Where do you go when you have so much racetrack? You go as low as you can? Oh, absolutely. You go as low as you can because that's where Ty has been so dominant. It just goes to the bottom and just drives by everybody. So you try to take his line away and make him go to the top and force him where he don't want to be maybe. Meanwhile, behind those two will be Michael Self, who has had a very interesting day, to say the least. There's Corey Gibbs, Ty's dad. Looks pretty calm. Former football player as well. I think he played at Stanford. He would, I believe, be correct, yes. Smart football player, too. Got to be to go play football there, That's absolutely. Right. Ty has done a great job for maybe getting to be a little uptight here with a race car that hasn't been as good as it's been all day. I think it's good enough if he has enough time. You know, Chandler Smith's going to be in control of this restart, so if he can get a good jump on Ty, he, he might be able to hold him off for a couple laps. At least he's hoping he can. So it'll be interesting. Phoenix Raceway just a mile around this unique shaped racetrack. We are inside of a four mile sprint to the finish here to decide this second race. See the 77 of Takuma Koga right behind the pace car. He is not obviously in the lead of this race, but he is the first car one lap down and he should be able to or first car not being shown on the lead lap. He should be able to get a lap back here when uh, when they get ready to restart. It's been a day full of drama. had not been boring, that much we know. And it figures to end on a pretty high note as well. Can Chandler Smith hold on? I don't know if karma really exists or not. There are some that say that it, it does, some that say no. When the team checked into their hotel, what do you suppose they found on the night side table? A little JBL audio clock. <laughs> you know. They said, well, we like that. <laughs> so we got product going out the door. Was Ty Gibbs trying to go back to back here, winning the West finale last year. Also picked up a couple of Arkham and Arts series wins last year. We are at first one at Salem. We are going overtime because we're going to be shown one to go when they get uh, to the line. So we will restart on lap 149. So we will have a green white checker finish. Maybe multiple attempts at a green white checker finish, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Well, let's talk about Chandler Smith and Matt Kraft and I start with you. What do you think his chances are to hold on to this and really pull off what is going to be an upset win based on how good the Gibbs car has been? Uh, he's got his hands full, without a doubt, as dominant as Ty's car has been. I mean, he's definitely got his hands full. So it's all going about getting down in turn one, just seeing if he don't spin the tires and can get a good launch right here and do something about it and get in turn one. I, I think... Chandler Smith is awfully good. He's a good race car driver. Again, he finished third in this truck race here last year, so he knows what he's doing. See what he, what kind of tricks he has in his bag here for this restart. Katie, what you got for us? Big, big Bill earlier told me that Chandler brings self-confidence to venturing to motor, motorsports. I asked Chandler about that. He said that self-confidence, well, he was taught by someone who was successful to stay positive. And if he could stay positive as he's running out front, my goodness, he will be hard to beat. 
just announced that he's going to drive eight truck races for KBM, the team he's been with for a couple of years. So you'll get to race against him some again, Matt. Green and white together about to come out. As the pace car makes its way One back left. to the infield. Chandler Smith five times. He won last year twice back to back, all with Venturini Motorsports, all with Billy Venturini as crew chief. That's exactly the scenario he's got going for him right now. I like Chandler Smith's uh, odds better with only a one-lap shootout than a two-lap shootout. You know who I like in this one? Self. Self, because he's, he's running third. He's running third. Wait, wait a minute <laughs> now. You keep oh, I'm jumping the again. whole race. <laughs> now you're going to jump on my man. One lap. And it will be settled in one short mile, or perhaps even less than that. Is the two touch right away? Self with a big dive to the bottom. Can he get a run on the 20 car? He's got Gibbs at the moment. That's going to keep Ty Gibbs from winning this race. And look at Haley Deegan rooting around on the bottom. Down the back stretch, the 18. Not much to do with the 25 and the 20 car. How about this? Chandler Smith has just pulled the upset. Getting the race lead late. Holding off the 25 and the 18. Picking up the general tire. 150 win at Phoenix Raceway. That was impressive. Very impressive. Really impressive. Right there. Really a nice job. Again, when Ty hit him in the quarter panel, it kind of killed his momentum, to be honest, right there. So I told you that uh, he's going to get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. His 21st arc of start has just produced his eighth win. Start talking Pretty about good. performance numbers. That's batting better than 333. Almost 40%. One, two, One, two finish for Venturini Motorsports in the first ever start here at Phoenix Raceway. Now you get a little bit of a glimpse on why Kyle Busch has chosen to put Chandler Smith in his trucks. Oh, absolutely. Did a very good job today, without a doubt. I mean, did not have to pass the car all day and put it together at the end. Well, no doubt a short track star. I've got written on my notes. The kid is just straight gas. That's the only thing he knows. He does a great, great job doing it. He just picked up the win today at the one mile Phoenix Raceway. Here's how he got that win. Holding off the 18, nudging him to the outside. And blocking just enough real estate to keep the 25 and the 18 at bay. Well, when the 25 got in between him here, that, that takes the 18 out of the picture. Chandler Smith was able to hold off his teammate Michael Self. But what a job by Michael Self. As much trouble as he had this race to come in second. The Polish victory lap is underway. And when we come back, we will hear from the winner, the General Tire 150 at Phoenix Raceway. What a day it was. Back at Phoenix Raceway, where the General Tire 150 has just come to a close. Ty Gibbs dominated, leading 122 laps, but he didn't lead the most important one, the final one. That man did. His name is Chandler Smith. He is in victory lane with Katie Osborne. <laughs> that celebration is real around here with Venture and Motorsports. That is a big smile on Chandler Smith's face, and that car is now probably the dirtiest it's been all night long. <laughs> Letting this team celebrate. He played it safe, he played it smart, and it really came down to pit strategy. How well did it come together from your point of view? Well, give it to this man right here. Mine and his combination, like I just said, is uh, one of a kind. And if he wouldn't have made that call, we wouldn't have won the race. He made a gamble, and that's why we're sitting here in victory lane. Can't thank JBL, Toyota, enough for all they gave me. Uh, Billy gave me a tremendous handful tonight with his JBL Toyota Camry, but look where we ended up. So all came down for a reason. Hey, can you bring me bring us all back to practice? Well, there was a conversation the three of us had, and there was some confidence, and we talked about that from the get-go. You brought confidence to this team. You said this is the car to beat here tonight. How did you guys both know together this was going to come to be? I lied. We weren't the car to beat. We just ended up winning the race. Uh, we actually, we, we weren't the best car tonight. Uh, there was at least one, maybe even two better. Um, but we knew, I knew if I get him track position, he's so tough to beat. So he's a race car driver, man. So I put him out, lead, put him out in the lead with a couple to go, and he won the race. <laughs>
I'm, I'm sure the celebrations are going to be pretty great tonight for Chandler Smith and the Venturini Motorsports crew. Congratulations to everyone. Dave, it is a party down here. And why wouldn't it be the inaugural stop for the Menards, Arca, or the Arca Menard Series, rather, goes the way of the 20s. We take a look at the general tire race results when it's all said and done by the narrowest of margins self, able to hold off Gibbs for second. Yeah, great run for Tanner Gray with a top five. Zane Smith battled all night with some damage for a top five finish. How about some of the Arkham and Arch debut racers? Nick Sanchez among them, Chase Cabri among them, Lawless Allen all getting top 10 finishes. Takuma Koga, the Japanese racer, coming home in the 13th spot. See, Jesse Love had a good run going till just inside of 10 laps to go. Gets crashed out, ends up 16. Tough race for Thad Moffat as well. He took the hardest hit of anybody in that 46 car. Glad to know, though, that he was able to walk away. I talked about how close it was for that second place finish. Watch the 25, watch the 18, side by side, and by that much. Just about a photo finish there for second. And man, you stuck with the 20 car. Way to go. We're, we're all bowing in <laughs> yeah. homage here in the booth, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, that, that was impressive, what he did right there at the end. And he's had a perfect restart. Well, obvious disappointment for Ty Gibbs, a youngster, a teenager. He's going to wear that emotion on his sleeve. But it's Michael Self now that leads Haley Deegan by 13. Or excuse me, 13 points, rather, Phil, after two of 20 races here in the Arkham and Art Series. Yeah, two great uh, great races for Michael Self, a win in a second. Haley Deegan with a really nice run again tonight with another top 10 finish with a seventh. Drew Dollar retains their third, his third place in points there, even though he crashed out late. Well, the show for much of this race belonged in the Toyota camp of Ty Gibbs. Katie's caught up with that disappointed third place finisher. You know, Dave, that's just an understatement. Disappointment for Ty Gibbs here. He knew he was the car to beat. He knew he was the driver to beat. How would you summarize the evening? I, I have no words to summarize it. they are all getting in trouble. That's how frustrated I am. I just can't thank Joker's Racing, Monster Energy, um, Oakley, everybody that's a part of this deal. Um, that's all I really can say, you know. Um, it's just, I'm very frustrated right now that how this was run. It was really embarrassing to the sport. So um, I just can't thank everybody enough that's helped me out. If you could define your happiness and or your sadness here, what 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 are both? I mean, I kicked their butts all day and then we got, we the car was just so good, you know, and we drove away with from it, uh, from them. And then we got to the end there and we kind of just got jacked, you know, but it, that's what it is, it's racing. I'm, uh, I was happy how we ran, or happy the, how we ran. And, and um, I think we just, just sucks what happened at the end. Understandably disappointed. However, there does sound like there's a few takeaways that he can bring with him in the next race, guys. Well, and he'll definitely get his. We know that 18 car is plenty strong. Of course, the Arkham Menard series, just the tip of the sphere of what's going on here at Phoenix Raceway. Tomorrow's schedule includes Xfinity Series qualifying, NASCAR Race Hub, Cup Series qualifying, and of course, the Xfinity Series race in the afternoon. And that, of course, all builds toward Cup Sunday. The race coverage begins at 2 o'clock on FS1. Switch over to Fox then for continuing coverage of that, plus the green flag coming sometime after 3 o'clock local. And the West Coast swing ends for the NASCAR series. We come back east and go to Atlanta for a triple header. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I always love going to Atlanta, and I know we're going to put on a good show for sure. And what a show it is Saturday. Xfinity and trucks on the same day at Atlanta Motor Speedway. So, a little bit of surprise to see that car in victory lane following a day and a weekend that, well, Michael Self may have been the point leader in the Daytona winner, but Ty Gibbs was unbelievable. I told you if you beat him in turn one, you could win it. <laughs> <laughs> but he led 122 <laughs> laps, so a lot of laps of caution, but uh, but a great show for the first time for the Arkham Menard Series here in Phoenix. Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. That's the next time you'll see the Arkham Menard Series on FS1. Up next, Fox PBC weigh-in. As Kosneski gets set to take on Helenese. Bye-bye.